Let me step back. What is consciousness? Eliezer Yudkowsky, what is consciousness? Are you referring to Chalmers's hard problem of conscious experience? Are you referring to self-awareness and reflection? Are you referring to the state of being awake as opposed to asleep? This is how I know you're an advanced language model. I did give you a simple prompt and you gave me a bunch of options. Uh, I think I'm referring to all with including the hard problem of consciousness. What is it in its importance to what you've just been talking about, which is intelligence? Is it um, a foundation to intelligence? Is it intricately connected to intelligence in the human mind? Or is it, a, is it a side effect of the human mind? It is a useful little tool like we can get rid of. I guess I'm trying to get some color in your opinion of how useful it is in the uh, intelligence of a human being and then try to generalize that to AI, whether AI will keep some of that. So I think that for there to be like a person who I care about looking out at the universe and wondering at it and appreciating it, it's not enough to have a model of yourself. I think that it is useful to an intelligent mind to have a model of itself, but I think you can have that without pleasure, pain, aesthetics, emotion, a sense of wonder. Um, like, I think you can have a model of like, how much memory you're using and whether like this thought or that thought is is like more likely to lead to a winning position and you can have like the use i think that if you optimize really hard on efficiently just having the useful parts there is not then the thing that the thing that says like i am here i look out i wonder I feel happy in this. I feel sad about that. I think there's a thing that knows what it is thinking, but that doesn't quite care about these are my thoughts, this is my me, and that matters. Does that make you sad if that's lost in AGI? I think that if that's lost, then every then basically everything that matters is lost. I think that when you optimize, that when you go really hard on making tiny molecular spirals or paper clips, that when you like grind much harder than on that, than natural selection ground out to make humans, that there isn't then the mess and intricate loopiness and like complicated pleasure, pain, conflicting preferences, this type of feeling, that kind of feeling. There's a, di you know, in humans, there's like this difference between like the desire of wanting something and the pleasure of having it. And it's all these like evolutionary kludges that came together and created something that then looks of itself and says like, this is pretty, this matters. And the thing that I worry about is that this is not the the thing that happens again just the way that it happens in us or even like quite similar enough that, that there are like many basins of attractions here and we are in the space of an attra of attraction like looking out and saying like ah what a lovely basin we are in and there are other basins of attraction and we do not end up in and the ais do not end up in this one when they go like way harder on optimizing themselves the natural selection optimized us cuz unless you specifically want to end up in the state where you're looking out saying, I am here, I look out at this universe with wonder, if you don't want to preserve that, it doesn't get preserved when you grind really hard and being able to get more of the stuff. We would choose to preserve that within ourselves because it matters and on some viewpoints is the only thing that matters. And that in part is uh, preserving that is in part 
a solution to the human alignment problem. I don't. I, I think the human alignment problem is a terrible phrase because it is very, very different to like try to build systems out of humans, some of whom are nice and some of whom are not nice, and some of whom are trying to trick you, and like build a social system out of like large populations of those who are like all at basically the same level of intelligence. Yes, you know, like IQ this, IQ that, but like that versus chimpanzees. <laughs> yeah. Like it is very different to try to solve that problem than to try to build an AI from scratch using, especially if God help you, you are trying to use gradient descent on giant inscrutable matrices. They're just very different problems. And I think that all the analogies between them are horribly misleading. And I, yeah. <laughs> Even though, so you don't think through reinforce, reinforcement learning through human feedback, something like that, but much, much more elaborate is possible to, to understand this full complexity of human nature and encode it into the machine. I don't think you are trying to do that on your first try. I think on your first try, you are like trying to build an, you know, okay, like probably not what you should actually do, but like, let's say you were trying to build something that is like alpha fold 17 and you are trying to get it to solve the biology problems associated with making humans smarter yeah. so that humans can like actually solve alignment. So you've got like a super biologist and you would like it to, and I think what you would want in the situation is for it to like just be thinking about biology and not thinking about a very wide range of things that includes how to kill everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that that you're that the first AIs you're trying to build, not a million years later, the first ones look more like narrowly specialized biologists than like getting the full complexity and wonder of human experience in there in such a way that it wants to preserve itself even as it becomes much smarter, which is a drastic system change. It's going to have all kinds of side effects that, you know, like if we're dealing with giant inscrutable matrices, you are not very likely to be able to see coming in advance. So, But I, I don't think it's just the matrices. It's we're also dealing with the data, right? With the, with the, uh, with the data on the, on the internet. And there, this is an interesting discussion about the data set itself, but the data set includes the full complexity of, of human nature. No, it's a it's a it's a shadow cast by Sh yes. by humans on the internet. But don't you think that shadow uh, is a Jungian shadow? <laughs> I think that if you had alien superintelligences looking at the data, they would be able to pick up from it an excellent picture of what humans are actually like inside. Yeah. This does not mean that if you have a loss function of predicting the next token mm -hmm. from that data set that the mind picked out by gradient descent to be able to predict the next token as well as possible on a very wide variety of humans is itself a human. But don't you think it is has humanness, a, d a deep humanness to it in the tokens it generates when those tokens are read and interpreted by humans? I think that if you sent me to a distant galaxy with aliens who are like much, much stupider than I am, so much so that I could do a pretty good job of predicting what they'd say, even though they thought in an utterly different way from how I did, that I might in time be able to learn how to imitate those aliens if the intelligence gap was great enough that my own intelligence could overcome the alienness. And the aliens would look at my outputs and say, like, is there not a deep you know, like name of alien nature to this thing? And what they would be seeing was that I had correctly understood them, but not that I was similar to them. <laughs>